jagat pati upi sharu pita kanta rada kanta namostu te tapta kancha na gorandi rade vrindavaneshwari ishavanu sute devi pranamami hari priye Vindayai tu nasi devi priyayai ke savacha cha krishna bhakti pradi devi sadya vakya namunna Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Shiva Sarigo Rabakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Today we are going to speak about emotional intelligence. Very, very interesting subject. Very interesting. And I must recommend to you to watch Prince E. Prince, and in other words, E A. He's a revolutionary from the United States who's talking a lot about emotional intelligence and how emotional intelligence is so much missing in our modern society. But extremely good. I was watching last night some of his contributions. But before we start, let us read something from the Shriya Bhagavatam. The Lord is withdrawing from this world. This is the visit Brahma visits Dwaraka. <coughs> Sri Bhagavan Vacha. Ite Vaisa Mahotpada Yutishtantiha Salvata Sapaschana Kulashyashit Brahmane Vyo Yaya. The Supreme Lord said, Our dynasty has been cursed by the Brahmanas. Such a curse is impossible to counteract, and thus great disturbances are appearing everywhere. Navashtavyam ihasmavir jijitvisumir aryaka pravasam sumahat punyam yasyamu. My dear respected elders, we must not remain any, any longer in this place if we wish to keep our lives intact. Let us go today to the most pure place, Prabhasa. We should not delay. Commentary. Let Dwaraka remain with all my eternal associates. The Devatas have previously entered the Yadus unseen by others. By my power of yoga, I will extract them from the Yadus and take them to Prabhasa. I will make them fight there by my Maya and send them to Swarga. And I, in my form as the son of Vaikuntha and his other forms as well, who were merged within me will go to Vaikuntha above Brahmaloka and other spiritual abodes. In my complete form, I with my associates will remain eternally in Dwarka. That is what the Lord was thinking. Yatrasnatva Daksha Sapat 
Prihito Yakshmanudu Yakrat Vimukta Kilbi Sat Satyo Vejebuya Kalodayam. Once the moon was afflicted with consumption because of the curse of Daksha, but just by taking bath at Pramasa, the moon was immediately freed from his sufferings and again resumed the vexing of his faces. Just by basing at Prabhasa, the moon, afflicted with consumption, became freed of suffering and was able to increase its faces. By basing at Prabhasa, by offering tarpanas to the pitris and devatas, by feeding the worship of the Brahmanas with various delicious foodstuffs and by bestowing gifts upon them as the most suitable candidates for charity, like sowing seeds, we will certainly cross over these de terrible dangers, though such acts of charity, just through such acts of charity, just as one can cross over a great ocean in a suitable boat. We will feed the attractive Brahmanas with food, just as on sowing seeds in a fertile field one obtains many fruits, so by giving charity to qualified candidates we will obtain great results. Shukadeva Goswami said, O favorite son of the Kurus, thus advised by the Lord, the Yadavas made up their minds to go to that holy place, Prabhasa, and thus joked their horses to their chariots. This is a very delicate chapter because it is the plan of the Lord to withdraw this Vamsa, his great family from this world. <clears throat> the Lord appears and disappears by his own sweet will. We also appear and disappear but not exactly by our sweet will. Some people think if I commit suicide, then I go by my will. But this is not very smart because you have not such an influence and you don't have such a right. So therefore, when you commit suicide, you only kill the physical body, the mind stays, the attachment stays, the karma stays, you become a ghost, and then you have to suffer then many, so many things, so it is absolutely useless. So we cannot come and we do not go by our own will. Bhishma Deva, he was blessed that he can die at the moment when he wants to go. But this is a very rare case. Most people are not having that option. Even though I know one lady, a devotee in Radha Kunda, she was a great devotee. She was the mother of Lalita Madhava. And she actually predicted perfectly the day and the moment she was going to leave the body. It was the most amazing thing. One morning she said, I leave my body today. So she said, bring everybody who I still owe money to. She dressed in her most beautiful white dress. Then everybody came and she gave them whatever money she owed to them. Then uh, she called her family, husband, daughter, son. She told them, the son, you look after her. You make this. And then she made them promise things. She, for all her life she did Parikrama of Radha Kunda. Every day with a Tulsi plant on her head. It was a very special lady. So then after that she went into Samadhi and left her body. Just like that. And she was not like physically finished, no. It was amazing. Anyway, it just came to my mind Lady Tamalabas because some rare cases like this do exist. Huh? People have such a power, such a devotion. So, uh, 
Now the departure of the Lord from this world is very difficult to tolerate for the devotee. Actually, even yesterday when I was giving class on the same subject, I was kind of uneasy because we can be happy Lord Krishna appears in the prison of Kamsa. Then he's taken by Vasudeva to the house of Nanda Baba in Gokula. And everybody's joy, joy, joy. But uh, actually Vasudeva and Devaki, they're in prison. It's not so much joy. If my father and mother, they're in prison and I'm taken to another house, is not exactly the biggest joy burst uh, story. It's very, very, very painful. But because when Krishna does something, he comes in this world, yada, yada, idarmasya, dyanir bhavati bharata, abhyutanam, adarmasya, tadatmanam shijamaha. So Krishna, he, he has a very, very long vision. And the vision is, You and me, 5,000 years later, can still feel emotion for this event. Like, if I say, the neighbor gave birth six months ago to a little boy. I was, okay, nice, congratulations. But that's it. But we are talking about a boy who was born 5,000 years ago, 10 kilometers from here, in Kansas prison. Then he was transferred to Gokula, and the whole world keeps talking about him. What happened? How did it happen? What is this? There's so many explanations. And then, of course, he is the Vasudeva Krishna, then is the, the, the Nanda Lal, Nanda 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 Nanda, the son of Nanda Maharaj, uh, Nanda Nanda Ram, Krishna. So there, there is so much harikata, so much conversations being discussed on this. So, practically speaking, we have to admit that whatever happened with Krishna is totally out of the common. Even if you do not believe in God, if you do not believe in Bhagavan Sri Krishna, tell me of any other birth taken thousands of years ago and people still talk about it. Maybe Jesus. They talk a lot about Jesus. But that is another question, another story there. But as far as India, China, Russia, Germany, North America, we never hear of anybody's birth. Yeah, people are born and dying every day. Why we are talking so much about where Krishna's birth? Who is this Lord Krishna? Now, if it just would be a folklore, just a nice story for kids, it's one thing, but it's not. Krishna is the one who speaks the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, and that happens to be the top book of guidance. As a matter of fact, I am sitting here because of the Bhagavad Gita. I read the Gita, and I was mesmerized. I said, what is this? How they are talking about the soul? Nobody else talks about the soul. Prabhupada was revolutionary because he said, life comes from life. Do you know that? Life does not come from matter. And God is life. God is not matter. Parasya Shakti. Vividaya Shruyati. Everything comes from him. All energy is from him. All galaxies are from him. All individuals are from him. So he is the original Shakti. Nevertheless, 
He is the Supreme Consciousness. And the Supreme Consciousness is the origin of our consciousness. Because we have individual consciousness. Look, Garuda is a smart guy. But he's totally individual. You don't know nothing about Garuda. If you want to know him, you'll be amazed what a kind of a character, what a kind of a creative person is going to do the drama tomorrow in Nagapalika uh, for the environmental day. But like this an example, Haryana, nobody knows what's going on in this person. He's so much an individual. And I know him quite well because many years, and I know he's a fantastic individual, but still I don't know too much about it. Because it's too deep, too, he, it's, he, he is a soul. And being a soul is, it's almost an infinite dimension. Time-wise, it's eternal, Nitya. The, the Tatashta Shakti, the Jiva, the Jiva is also eternal. The universe is eternal and the Jiva is also eternal. So here we are, individuals. I just mentioned two. I can mention each and every one of you. You are amazing individuals. Even if you are a simple, Sweet. You are still an amazing individual. Every individual in this world is so fantastic and so amazing. Because he is a son or a daughter of the infinite supreme original consciousness. So this is the target. The definition of individual consciousness in relationship to its origin. I'm not the origin of myself. Nobody can say, hey, I made myself. No. As a matter of fact, even though you are such an incredible individual, incredible capacity, sorry to say, you know nothing about yourself. Embarrassing, no? I am so much and I know nothing. But you want to know something. It is the nature of us who want to know. Chit Shakti is knowledge capacity. Because we are Satchit and Ananda. These are our three key ingredients. They're part of us. We can't say, I'm not Sat. Stupid. What do you mean you're not Sat? You don't know who you are and you say, I am not. You can say, I am, if you know that you are. But you cannot say, I'm not, if you don't know. What a kind of a stupid statement is that? So, Sat means you are. And if you are now, you were there before and you will be there in the future, and that is Sat. Chit is the capacity to acquire information. Oh, oh, acquire information? I mean, first of all, this body gives us senses. Ears, eyes, touch, nose, taste. Those senses can accumulate information. This is sweet. This smells like jasmine. This sounds beautiful. Classical rock. This looks amazing. Takuchi, nature. So we have senses 
which acquire information. And not only that, we can store that information. I mean, we are so impressed by the computer age, no? Oh, how much the computers can do. But your eye can do more than any supercomputer can do. <coughs> because it catches image, 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 and all stores it in the memory bank. Some images, they're double, so you don't keep two. Your, your higher intelligence automatically discriminates what's important, what's not important. But in the image bank, it's all there. Billions and trillions of images every day. Kept in your memory bank. Then you have a sound memory. You can recognize a voice which you heard 10 years ago. Somebody comes around the corner, you hear that voice, you say, Hey, my friend, you have arrived. He says, Oh, you know, I heard your voice. I recognized your voice. What an amazing ability <clears throat> is in our memory bank. Sounds, images. Thesis, antithesis, synthesis. We have an evaluation of the memory bank. It's not only that. Store it, store it, store it, store it, and then it's like, uh, no. We have a complete supervision of the memory bank. It is so capable of comparing, evaluating, giving messages, this is good, this is bad, this is dangerous, this is, you should make an effort to stay with this. And that's where we reach the subject of emotional intelligence. But this is a still a big jump. Still, we are just by evaluation of memory information storage. Now, where's the emotional intelligence coming in? Chit Shakti is such an amazing divine power which the Lord has given to each and every one of us. Even to the mosquito. Mosquito. Mosquito has amazing abilities. You see how quick the mosquito is when you try to catch the mosquito, no? Mosquito knows everything. When you're sleeping, then he goes and sucks your blood. He's so smart. I've heard that, that the mosquito can tell from 100 meter distance whether he likes your blood or not. I never talked with mosquitoes about it, I just heard that. Sometimes you get information, you cannot really verify it uh, totally, but such things, amazing things. So, the memory bank gets filled with images and then the continuous evaluation of all the information we have obtained. Chichakti, or the knowledge acquiring, knowledge processing, capacity has another feature. The most amazing feature. What is that? Speak. Because what you process, what you have retained, now it's coming out in words of wisdom. Now you're supposed to help others with what you saw, with what you learned, everything. Now you're supposed to produce some tangible help for the world. That is part of the, we can call it dana, giving. Dana not only means give donation, it means giving guidance, giving help, giving love, giving refuge. So we speak, 
our mouth is like the the proof that something good has happened inside. <laughs> because if you only retain and if you only process but you never produce any result from it, then what's the use? The teachers know they have to bring the students to become teachers also. If the student is not going to become a teacher, then like if a doctor after studying in medical school is not going to do any healing of others, then he wasted his time and he wasted the teacher's time. So we expect something from you. What? Sachit. What is expected from you? <coughs> that you produce another. That's the test. Will you produce Ananda? You are Ananda. Be because the very essence of your life is this thirst for Ananda. Ananda Maya Sat. Lord Krishna's energy is Ananda Maya. He provides any kind of pleasure and happiness. Of course, there's different types of them. There's also Tama. Tama bliss, Raja bliss, Sattva bliss, and there's Sula Sattva bliss. So Sula Sattva Ananda is Vishuddha Sattva Ananda. Oh. Premananda. When the bliss comes from the highest spiritual intelligence. But in the emotional intelligence, you work on that your contribution is to the ananda of your surroundings. In other words, your children are happy, your wife is happy, your employees are happy, your uh, friends are happy, society is happy. If we are working with our intelligence for the happiness of others, for the ananda of others, then that is called emotional intelligence. Rational intelligence means making good calculations how to make a good business. It doesn't mean that you take into consideration the real higher benefits. So therefore, when you apply emotional intelligence, you will be always eager to produce some kind of ananda to the people in your surrounding. And this Ananda is most likely on a sentimental platform. Like you say, oh, why are you sad? We love you, you're so nice, and like that. But it's, it's emotional, it is sentimental. It is not the top degree. That's why emotional intelligence is very important, but it's not the most important. Spiritual intelligence is the most important. Rational intelligence is only for becoming a good mechanic, for becoming a good software engineer. For that, rational intelligence may be useful. But emotional intelligence is for producing an environment, a suitable environment around yourself, but that suitable environment is not sufficient. Therefore, the emotional intelligence is not enough. Therefore, it's not enough that you're a nice person, everybody likes you. No. There must be more. And now we come back to how we acquire knowledge. 
Have we acquired knowledge about Brahman? Atatu Brahmadikyasa? Do we know anything about Paramatma? Do we know who is Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchit Ananda Vidraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarvakarana Karana? Do we know anything about that? Do we know anything about the eternal destination of the soul? We know for sure we are not going to stay here. Even Ambika, she loves Vindam, but she can't stay here. In the eternal Vindam, she can stay, but in this, in this world, she cannot stay forever. No way. Everybody has to move. Everybody's going, 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 going. Where are we going? Nobody knows. So the question, where are we going? This is called Vasudeva Tattva. Or, like what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Brameti Paramatmeti Bhagavan Iti Shakyate. All the origins of everything is in Bhagavan. In Vasudeva, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, and Vasudeva is coming from Vishnu Loka, and Vishnu Loka is an expansion of Krishna Loka, and Krishna Loka is the manifestation of the eternal destination of all the fortunate souls. Do you believe that? Sincerely, do you believe that, what the Vedas say? That there's a place called Goloka Vendavan, where we are all destined to go? Some people don't believe it. I believe it because I have to go somewhere. And if I have to go somewhere, I don't want to go back to this place. I don't want to go to Swarga. I don't want to go to Brahman. I don't want to go to Nada. I don't want to go other galaxy. I don't want, I don't want. I want to be with love supreme. And that therefore that place is called Goloka, the place of eternal love. So I want to go there. We have to go somewhere. So what's the difficulty in believing in something where you have to go anywhere, anywhere. Yeah, you can also go other places, no problem. But you cannot stay in other places. But in Goloka you can stay forever because you are Satchit Ananda. Satchit Ananda belongs into the world of Satchit Ananda. And the way to go there is Satyam Shivam Sundaram. The way to go there is not sense gratification, exploitation, egotism, or anything like that. No. The way to go there is spiritual intelligence. So we are now in a world where they're only promoting rational intelligence. Even emotional intelligence they consider Superfluous. That's why all the marriages nowadays in danger. So many marriages are breaking up. Because the people have no consciousness that this is the place where I learn how to give. They think that love means that somebody does what I like. Then that person loves me very possessive. We are very possessive in everything and therefore we are not really ready to give. So, therefore the emotional intelligence, it is producing so many isms. Oh, let's be very good people, let's be communists. Let me let us distribute all the things to everybody so that everybody has. Another person says, Oh, let's help the poor, let's become altruists. 
So many isms are created in emotional intelligence. But these isms have no substance to themselves because they are just sentimental explosions of doubtful people. Even though the emotions may be beautiful. You may say, I want to adopt the orphans. Very good. But then what are you going to give the orphans? Are you going to give them rational intelligence, emotional intelligence, or spiritual intelligence? Please tell me. Please tell me what you want to do with the people who depend on you. We can, how can we make them happy? You have to give them spiritual intelligence. Emotional, that's exactly my point. Emotional intelligence is not enough. It cannot provide. It cannot provide the shelter of our consciousness. It is like a mathematical equation. It's like a super, superior level of commitment and you will find that when all the information you process, what comes from your mouth, can only give temporary peace, then it's not enough. Because after the peace again struggle come, again fighting come. We have to elevate our consciousness to spiritual intelligence. And that's only possible if we believe in spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligence comes from belief. Because if I believe in divine goodness, then I can sacrifice mundane interests for it. If I don't believe that such a thing exists, then I'd be like Charvak. Enjoy. Enjoy the maximum. Because what else is there to be done in life? Eat, sleep, and get married. For tomorrow you die. All finished. Enjoy a little bit. So, this is the very materialistic way of seeing. But when we see from that life comes from life principle, that our Satchit Ananda comes from Satchit Ananda Vigrama, the personality of Satchit Ananda original, then we will find that we have to open the doors of our heart. Now, how does that work? How can we open the doors of our heart? Very good question. The doors of our heart are opened by the ear when you listen to the sadhus and you hear the divine shakta blanda. That is the only thing which can open the doors of your heart. Otherwise there's no key, there's no access, nobody can force open the doors of his heart. Only by hearing Shakta Brahma from the words of the Sadhus. Now what do they do? What does it do? They fill your heart with transcendental knowledge. And they give from their heart the Bhava of devotion, which is their faith. Like somebody whose faith is contagious. If somebody has faith, then other person follows easily.
that's not blind faith. It is emotionally inspired faith. Or you may say, spiritually inspired faith. Like sometimes I take a few people to present Krishna to them on the altar. And I offer obeisances. And sometimes the people also offer obeisances even though they never knew about this. But they see me, oh, he's offering obeisances, then I also offer obeisances, like, like an imitation of a child. But that is the devotion is contagious. You sing, you dance, you take prashad, you have sadhu sangha. Very, very emotional. But if you are in contact with the real sadhu, the emotion is not mundane emotion, it is the emotion of devotion. And the emotion of devotion is the one which will open and fill your heart with spiritual intelligence by having faith. Like we have faith in Vrindavan. At least a little bit. Otherwise, why would you be here? Why would you be here in this hot little town? Hmm? Why would you be here offering your basis of cleaning the Yamuna? Why? Why would you get up early in the morning for Mandal Arti? Or come to class and somebody pulls your ear? <laughs> Why would you allow this? Because faith. It's only because of faith. Nobody of you has any proof. And if you do have any proof, it's your secret. If you do have any proof of the divine, that remains your secret. But we don't have any proof. We are here because of faith. Very good, very good, wonderful, wonderful. Vindam, 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 Govardhan, 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 Radha Kunda, Radha Kunda, Radha Kunda, Seva Kunda, Seva Kunda, Seva Kunda, Mahaprasadam, Sadhu Sanghas, get up early, do devotional service. Not only this, the most difficult thing in the world is to give up faith. Faith. Sex and money. Very difficult to give up. They are so strong energies. Now look at this boy. He could be making money every day. Instead of that, he's here training, helping the project in Vendar. Young man, he could become a software engineer. He could very soon be making $10,000 a month. Here's another one. Are they getting any money for being here? Are you getting any money for being here? Why they are here? Not only they don't get any money, they have to spend some money from their, from their work before so they can finance to be here. So already by the Shakti of Krishna they have overcome money. Now, sex life Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya means not, no sexual life which give any suffering to others. So this is a very nice, nice lifestyle. Of course, Vrihastha life is also very appreciated and nice, but it's different. Vrihastha life, he has to, first of all, start working for his money because how can you maintain a family without any money? So that's another subject. Then the third one is fame. Maybe you are here because you want to become a famous son. Maybe you say, oh, now I do this seva here in Vrindavan in my use, and later they're going to say, Nimai was the saint of Vrindavan. Maybe some desire like this. Very difficult. Sadhus have also problems. Sadhu also carries many, many uh, 
like so many desires are there, sometimes they go like this way, that way, that way, but there's, there's desires. We see the ego is in Indra. He may, he may put up a big struggle with Krishna, just because Krishna said, no offering for you this year. Oh, he was so upset. So, it's going on, desires everywhere, but you see, by the power of bhakti, by the spiritual intelligence, they have already given up money, at least at this point, have given up sex of life, living in brahmachari, Brahma, brahmacharini life, and all the fame, we are also into fame, yes, we give our fame to Prabhupada, because he is all the credits that we are here now, that he picked us up from all around the world, it's all his credit. I can't give anybody else credit because there is nobody else who gets the credit. It's amazing how one man from India can get so much credit. Now his influence is in the trillions of dollars. Means thousands and millions of people have made temples for Krishna, chant Hare Krishna, written books, this and that, or you know how much money they spent in pilgrimage, just coming to India to walk around Raj, Raj Mandar every year. Thousands and thousands of people are coming, and every year more and more and more. With spiritual intelligence is spreading. So all this is based on faith. That's my point. Nothing else. Only faith. Faith, 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 and faith. Shraddha. And Krishna says, Ashraddha dana purushada masya svaparantara. Without faith, you go nowhere. It's only by faith. So what does it mean? Life is based on faith. If a person tells you, I want to marry you, you have to have faith in the person, otherwise it's not possible to marry. If you want to make a business deal with somebody, you have to have faith in the person that he doesn't want to cheat you. If you want to eat food, you have to have faith that the food is without poison. If you take a walk, every step you take, you have to have faith that the floor can support my weight. Everything you do is faith. The divine, the supreme, God, Bhagavan, yes, with faith. That is spiritual intelligence. Now, spiritual intelligence is neither blind faith nor superstition. That's very important, especially for the atheists and for the rationalists. No, spiritual faith is the intelligent processing of all the accumulated knowledge which this individual could do. It is the final result of my journey that I put my faith in the spiritual existence. And superstition? Superstition means that you cheaply believe in something for some cheap concocted Conclusion. Let's find an example. What is really superstition? It's not easy because superstition is a frequent accusation of those who do not believe in the divine towards those who do have belief in the divine. They say, oh, you guys are superstitious. You just imagine some other world. You imagine some divine power. You imagine some well-wisher 
who listens to your prayer. This is just your superstition, your imagination. Where is for us superstition means to believe in the cheats. Those who will cheat you in this world. There's plenty of them. And they make you think, if you put this rock here, and if you throw this water there, then you will automatically get a good wife. Oh, yeah, really? Okay. Put the rock here, throw the water there. Now will I get a good wife? That is superstition. Karma kandik superstition. To believe in the cheaters. That is not spiritual intelligence. That exists. And one of the <coughs> one of the cheaters they tell you you're God yourself. Why are you looking for God? You are God. I am God. You are God. Everybody is God. If you believe in that, it's not only superstition, it is utter foolishness. Because it means nothing. If you say everybody is God, it means nobody is God and God doesn't exist. It is such a silly, superstitious, safe statement. You are God, I am God. We cannot even create one banana, and here we are saying, I'm Bhagavan, I'm Bhagavan. Let me slap you, Bhagavan. How are you, Bhagavan? Go and lift the Govardhan hill, then we talk again. So, this is very superstition. And another superstition is that I will become very powerful and independent by mystic cities. This is superstition because mystic cities, they do not bring the final result of prayer. Ravana, Kausa, they had mystic cities. Hiranyakashipu, he had mystic cities. They were very, very powerful people. The Devatas, they also all have mystic cities. They can fly on swans and things like that. But that is not the goal of every soul. Therefore, to believe in that or to focus on that, that is some kind of superstition. Wishful thinking projected for selfish goal. I repeat, wishful thinking projected for selfish goal. That is superstition. And then the real face, the real shraddha in the divine it vanishes into invisible spheres. It can come back, but it will not be strongly manifest. So the whole subject is very complex. It's not something very easy to explain. I was given the target for this class to explain a more emotional intelligence on the level of conflicts, on the level of family, on the level of communications, on the level of being attacked by somebody, how to react to this, on the level of living together with community, on the level of self-esteem, on the level of religious traditions, on the level of philosophy, and on the level of our relationship with the Supreme. Now, I think I covered a few of these.
in this class. But obviously it is too many subjects to cover all in one. But one thing is, I will give a short abbreviation. Emotional intelligence means not get lost in communications, like the social media, and go to spiritual communication by listening to the Shastras and to the Sadhus. In case of conflicts, emotional intelligence will try to get you to create an atmosphere of peace. But in the Bhagavad Gita and in the story of the Kurus and the Pandavas, Krishna has said that no, spiritual intelligence should lead you in the conflict to side with truth even if there is conflict. That is the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. In the case of having received aggressions, obviously emotional intelligence tries to create a peaceful solution always. But spiritual intelligence will tell you that you should always stay in positive association. And if you're getting some very negative aggression from somebody, you may consider that you do not want to be in communication or in association with such a person. In relationship of the family, emotional intelligence is a very beautiful sentimental family, but spiritual intelligence will lead you to <coughs> help the family at any cost to have spiritual values and spiritual vision and spiritual association, which is often neglected by family people. Often they just get absorbed in getting money, sense enjoyment, and nice sentimental relationships. I was just recently in a house of a very, very rich man. He had invited many devotees, and he was such a nice man. But he was serving soft drinks, all this junk food in plastic cups by the thousands as charity. This is not charity, this is tamagun. This sugar water made by these big companies, we should drink the juices of nature, sugar cane, fruit juice, or water, but anything but chemically sugarized, industrial, solderized waters, which put the money and bring the money outside of India. Huh? It's crazy. So, and from a plastic cup, worse. So, in a way, in all his goodness, he was not deep enough to analyze what am I doing. And this is just an example. There are so many, even in the Bandaras, sometimes you find they use garbage. It's not good material, and then it ends up in the streets. So then it far is living in community. Your emotional intelligence should be that you are a peacemaker. But your spiritual intelligence should tell you that you should be a love maker. You spread spiritual love and enthusiasm in the community. Otherwise, if you're just a joker who just makes fun that everybody can laugh, then you're not the real friend of the soul. As far as self-esteem is concerned, your emotional intelligence will want to feel everybody likes me, everybody appreciates me, I'm nice with everybody. Very nice, but it's not true because you may have to say to somebody, sorry, the place you're using is Tamaguna. We say, but, 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 why you criticize my plates? Because they're aluminum foils, they're poisonous, and even this water bottle, see, this all poisonous, stop it, let's come to a higher intelligence. So in other words, it's, a, it's in spiritual intelligence, we may have to criticize when we are getting lost in sentimentality. 
If we do not do it, we can do it in a sweet way, but we have to define what is beneficial, what is not beneficial. That is spiritual intelligence. It is, it is a razor's blade. On a razor's blade you can cut yourself or you can go straight and be protected. Then, in relationship with your leaders, emotional intelligence, that should be to get the best from your leaders, but not to follow them if they say the wrong things. Leaders means leaders of truth. Otherwise, leaders are leaders of confusion. So we should not submit to leaders of confusion, even though they may be famous, rich, or whatever. And in spiritual intelligence, the leaders we are choosing are those who are devoted to God 100%. Those who really make God their life and soul, they should be followed, nobody else. In the regards to religion, the emotional intelligence should understand that faith is multi-way. Multi so we should appreciate all the faith people have in the divine. Because we cannot say, your faith is better than your faith. At the same time, in spiritual intelligence, you have to go by your satisfaction in your heart. What is the way back to home, back to God? And you will follow that path which is touching your heart the most. And this is your right and your duty. So you need spiritual intelligence in your religious sphere. In relation to philosophy, emotional intelligence and philosophy. You see, philosophy without God is speculation. And God without philosophy is sentimentality. So we need a spiritual path to understand philosophy. And that is provided by the Vedic scriptures and by the Acharyas, by the Sampradayas. They provide philosophy and religion together and give you the chance to acquire spiritual intelligence, to appreciate it. And finally, in relationship to the Supreme, emotional intelligence is appreciation that there is somebody supreme. Spiritual intelligence is to surrender to him and to do what he wants you to do at any given moment in your life. And in this way, I will close this uh, topic. We are a little bit out of our time frame already. Anyway, we should see the darshan of Takoti, Tekel Prashadam, and do other things. So unfortunately, we do not have time for questions. Only if somebody has an urgent commentary to make, you can do so right now. Hare Krishna. Any commentary? No? Let's have Takoti.